Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to the most underrated PC building YouTube channel. And in today's video, I'll be building for you guys a PC with i9 and a RTX 3070 white gaming PC for 1200 CAD or for you Americans out there, just under 900 USD. So without further delay, let's cue the intro and let's get to the video. Right off the bat we have the i9-10A50K CPU which has 10 cores and 20 threads. It has amazing IPC performance in games and it's overclockable. This CPU is not only great for gaming and streaming, it can also perform very quick alt taps just in case a family member or friend walks in on you while you are doing... uh... something important. Anyways, the CPU should be able to handle up to a RTX 3090 with very minimal bottlenecks. I was able to get the i9 and this MSI Meg Z490 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi motherboard as a bundle deal for just 450 Canadian dollars. The motherboard is one of the top line boards back in the 10th gen CPU days. The motherboard not only supports K processor and RAM overclocking, it also has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality. Another great thing about the board is that it has built-in NVMe heatsink which is great to keep your M.2 NVMe SSD drives at a cool temperature. So for the RAM, I went with this kit of 16GB 3200MHz DDR4 memory I bought for 60 bucks from AliExpress. It's got the white color scheme with the RGB bling and super nice crystal design. But there's a downside with this kit, which is the timing. It is only at CL19. But for those of you who don't know anything about PC, lower CL number means better performance. But since it's paired up with an Intel chip, you won't be able to tell much of a performance loss. To cool the CPU, I went with this all-white non-LED up here 6 heatsink tower cooler for just 34 bucks from Amazon. I decided to go with this cooler in order to achieve the all-white gaming PC aesthetic. And not only is the cooler enough to cool the CPU, it is also enough to handle some small overclocks. Now for the storage, I went with the 1TB NVMe which I was able to get for $75 off AliExpress. Honestly, in my opinion, it's time to ditch hard drives since 1TB SSDs are so darn cheap these days. On top of that, SSDs have no moving parts in them which means it'll last way longer than most of the hard drives out there. With the 1TB SSD in the system, it will have blazing fast speeds for loading programs, windows, and games. As for the most important component in this computer, it is the graphics card. I was able to snatch this RTX 3070 white Zotac card from Facebook Marketplace for $500. You could definitely find cheaper ones nowadays, but because I wanted to keep the all white aesthetic, I don't really mind paying a little bit more for it, especially when it was delivered to my door. This graphics card is a really good solution for those gamers that want a high refresh rate gaming experience at the 1440p resolution, and it has decent ray tracing performance. Of course, the 3060 Ti is also a great choice if you want to save a little bit of money. Alternatively, if you wanted to save a little bit of money and don't care about ray tracing while having the same performance, you could go with the AMD RX 6800 or the 6800 XT, and in my opinion, those graphics cards are more future-proof as they have 16GB of VRAM comparing to the 8 the 3070 have. To power the whole system, I decided to go with the 750 watt unit from Ares Game on Amazon for $60. Despite the brand not being the biggest name out there, this company actually offers really good warranty on their 80 plus bronze unit, which is 5 years, although I have no idea if they will actually honor it. Not only that, this unit is also semi-modular and all the cables have the sleek flat black design, but at the time of editing, all the units are sold out. Finally, to house all the components together, I went with this all-white Nova Mesh SETG case for $60 from Canada Computers, which includes two white stock fans, but I only kept one on the top as exhaust. Of course, I also added four ARGB fans, which I got from AliExpress for $25 in order to give this PC the gaming title. This will be the third time I'll be using this case in a flip, and I'm not really a case review guy, so the only thing I can really say is that the build quality is solid for the price, and there's enough room in the back to cable manage smoothly. Now with all the parts and prices talked about, let's build this thing and get to the benchmarks. Keep in mind this PC was built and benchmarked around 2 months ago so the performance might be a little bit off. Alright guys, so as I'm downloading all the games to test on this PC, this logo fell off and it's no longer sticky. First off, as you can see in Cinebench R23, while running the multi-core benchmark, the final score will be 15,582, which in 2023 is still a really good performing CPU. And of course, if you overclock the CPU, you'll get a much better score as well. 
Up next, I tested the system in a Fire Strike benchmark. It is mainly to test out the CPU and GPU at the same time. So at the default setting, the score comes out to be 25,648. And if you check out my other videos, this is an insane score considering how much I paid for this gaming PC. Now for the test that people actually watch this video for, I tested these games at 1440p. First up, I tested Valorant at the max settings, and the average FPS after a whole spike rush game is around 317. There was basically little to none frame drops during the entire run, which is what you should expect when you use a 10th gen Intel CPU, because Valorant is a CPU intensive game. The next game I benchmarked was Apex Legends at basically the max settings with shadows turned to very high and with TSAA enabled. And the average while playing a trios match turned out to be 141 FPS. For some reason, every time I play Apex, the frame cap is at 144, so if the FPS limit is unlocked like the other YouTubers, this PC will probably be able to get a little bit higher average FPS. Up next, I tested Overwatch 2 at the epic preset with FSR disabled while at 100% resolution scaling. And after a game of casual match, the average FPS I ended up with was 142. This is one of the games that shows that this PC will go great with a 1440p high refresh rate gaming monitor. The game I benchmarked after is the best crossover game out there right now, which is Fortnite. With everything set to high, with the view distance set to max, as well as enabling FX AA, the average FPS after a few matches is 118. At the time of editing, I can assure you that you'll be having a much better experience and maybe a little bit more frames now because of the Unreal Engine 5 update. Now for the final 3 games, I tested them in their own built-in benchmarks, and here are the results. In GTA 5 with everything set to the maximum and only FXAA turned on, the average is 159 FPS. In Counter-Strike Global Offensive with all the settings turned up to the maximum, the average I got after a few runs is 403 FPS. And lastly, in Borderlands 3, at the Ultra preset, this system was able to crank out an average of 88 FPS. And that is it for today's build guide. If you enjoyed the video, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't, still give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. So with all that being said, click on one of the videos that popped up on the screen about like a few seconds ago to watch my other build videos. I'll see you guys very soon.